free will is real, you don't have it, and let me explain why. Firstly, we should start by addressing that you are not your brain, you are not your body, you are the metaphysical observer that is observing your brain, your body, and your experiences. You are simply your consciousness, right? And this is the part of us that is inherently free. This is the part of us that has the ability to override our body, our, our mind, whatever we're feeling, and make conscious choices, right? But that is not the only factor in this equation. We also have an ego, a sense of self, a sense of importance. And that ego, that importance, then gives rise to our emotions and feelings, which then give rise to our thoughts. And our ego is what prevents us from being free. It is the deterministic part of us. Which makes sense because the ego is the factor that makes us dependent on the external world. Our sense of importance and value that we gain from the ego is projected into the world, right? You don't care if just a normal everyday cup drops in the store and shatters, but if it's your favorite cup, then you do care, right? Because you've projected your sense of importance and sense of self into that cup. And you do this with everything. You have hundreds of thousands of these ego attachments sprawling out into the world. You think that cars are important. You think that your family is important. You think all sorts of things. And you think that they are objectively important because they infest your perspective, your hallucination of reality. And so because you have this system of ego attachments, you have all of these different things that you think are important. All of your decisions and choices are rooted in the preservation of the things that you think are good and rooted in the elimination of the things that you think are bad. And so the idea is if you can leave these attachments and leave that world that you've created for yourself, that system, then you can be fully conscious. And every moment that you're living and experiencing can be a free decision, a decision that is not bound by consequences, that is not bound by desire and, and searching for something. But we still haven't addressed something more nuanced in this equation, which is why do we form attachments? Because it is not so simple as to say that we arbitrarily form attachments, right? You feel completely justified in your attachment to your mother or your attachment to your father or, you know, something important to you. Why is that? Why does that feel objective? And why when those things die or when we are apart from those things, when we don't get those things, when we aren't experiencing those things, do we feel bad? Well, it's because we want the experience of happiness. We want the experience of being content. We want to be loved, we want to be accepted, and we want to enjoy life. And so when we have a positive experience, when we have that experience of enjoying life, what do we do? We form an attachment to it. We say, I don't want this to end. I want this to happen forever, right? The very, very natural response. But that in turn makes us unhappy. Because now we have this new standard for reality. We have this new expectation for our levels of comfort and joy and bliss and whatever. And thus we become less free. Because now everything that we're doing is completely dependent on these attachments, on these positive experiences that we've had. Not recognizing that the reason we had the positive experiences is because we weren't expecting anything of them. So then you might say, okay, well, how do I lose these attachments? How do I lose this expectation? Like, that is a normal response to want to have more good things, so how do I just stop that? And this is where the difficulty lies. You have to love yourself. And I don't mean that figuratively or metaphorically, I mean that literally. In the moments where you think you need to be somewhere else, in the moments where you think you need to hit your dab pen or you need to go play games or you need to go talk to somebody or whatever, in those moments of desire and expectation and craving, you need to stop yourself and love yourself and recognize you have nowhere else to be. That the whole point of this entire thing, this entire existence, is just to experience. And every time you think you need something external of you, you are running from that experience. And of course, at the same time, you're chasing an experience that was created in the absence of wanting it. So you'll never satisfy it the, the, the way that you did that first time. Which is why it's such a common shared experience among humans that the first time you do anything is always the best. Because you're exploring reality, right? You're exploring experience. But it doesn't just have to be the first time. It can be every time. Every single moment that you're living can be an exploration of the present, can be an exploration of experience. No two experiences are alike, ever. Everything is always unique. There are two gazillion flavors of ice cream and they all taste amazing and they're all different, completely unique and different. Is that not amazing? The moment you favor one over the other is the moment you stop experiencing all the other ones. So love yourself, be free, be happy. There's nothing holding you back. You have everything that you need. You have everything that you want. All it takes is letting go. All it takes is a radical leap of acceptance for yourself and for everything else. I love you. I hope you're having a great day.
Stay curious.